Good evening and welcome back to another Unreal 4 shoot 'em up tutorial. So in this video we're going to return to the firing functionality that we've started by creating our projectile base. We'll now be able to use that and create our function for the player to fire something. So if we begin this by going to the BP underscore player and we can come in here and just to recap as well, under the project settings and input really early on in the creation of the project we've already set everything up in the bindings ready to call the input functions that we'll be using in just a moment. So we have the primary and the secondary fire that we'll get to a little bit later. So we've already seen some of the input that we've used for the axis mappings, which have been to move the player side to side. We'll now use the action mapping. So to do this, in a very similar way to what we've done before, we're just going to right click anywhere and type input action primary fire, or you can just type primary fire. So that will bring up the action mapping that we've made previously. And from here, when we press this, we want to do a branch. So this branch, first of all, is just going to be here so that we can check whether or not we have the movement enabled. So we'll drag the move enabled in over here. This just stops the player from being able to fire whilst the starting animation is playing, the rotation, because that looks a little bit weird when you can fire and you don't yet have full control of the ship. Now, the next thing we're going to do is going to be one of our first looks at using a function timer. So if we type timer, and we can see here we get a few different options. We have set timer by event and set timer by function name. So they both do pretty much the same thing. And this time we're just going to look at the set timer by function name. And what this will do is we can put this to loop. So the first thing is we'll set this to looping. And we can set this to do something every so often. So we're going to make this 0.2 every 0.2 seconds. And the final thing that we need to pass in here is the name of the event that it will be looking for. And we'll just call this fire. And then the last thing it's looking for is the name of the event, which will be triggering this. And we'll just call this the uh, prim fire for primary. Because we're going to need to save primary fire, the actual full name for a function we'll be making in just a moment. Now, what we could do as an alternative is we could run something off of an event tick and we could set a delay as a kind of a fire rate delay on there. Now, the reason that we're using the function over the event tick is because event tick obviously runs constantly, even when you're not using it. So we'd have a constant call to check whether or not we should be firing. And the other thing is that it runs a lot more often than our function timer is going to. So the function timer runs every 0.2 of a second. So this also comes with a lot less of an overhead. And as you'll probably find as you get more and more into development, where you can, you should always try and avoid using the event tick. Uh, you don't have to completely avoid using it. Some people go to a bit of an extreme, but you definitely want to use it as little as possible. And things which are going to be reoccurring, you can put into things like uh, animations, delays, or timers to ease up the use on the event tick there. Now to get this working, we need the custom event, which we haven't yet created. So we'll create a custom event, which it will be calling, and this will be the prim fire. And make sure that this is named exactly the same way as you did in this box here. And what this will be calling is our function. So if we add a new function, and we'll call this primary fire and full, because this is where the interesting thing is actually going to be happening. We'll go back into the event graph. We're going to drag off of here, and we will call the primary fire function. So I've just put this in a function just to make it a little bit tidier, because all of this is going to be happening inside of the event graph anyway. So we can nest some of this into a function just to keep things a little bit cleaner. And then we'll just pull off of the timer by function name, and we'll call that in here as well. The reason we do this is the first time you press this, it's going to want to execute something off of here before it calls the, the custom event. So just to make sure that this definitely gets fired, it's not going to call it twice. Uh, we just plug it in from both places to begin. Now, if we just select the primary fire function we've just made and add a new parameter up here, and this will be of type transform, and we can just call this the spawn transform. Okay, so with the spawn transform, all we're going to do is we will control drag in our projectile spawn, and we want to drag off of here and get world transform. So that will return the location of this projectile spawn over here. Just plug that into the spawn transform and that will be the details that the projectile will inherit when it spawns. So at the moment, this is a scale of one, one and one. So depending on the mesh that we give this, it will be a standard cube for the mesh that we'll be using. And it will get the location in the world of this projectile spawn. So it will take into account the nested value of the player mesh and that the projectile spawn point is just ahead of there. And that's exactly where the projectile will come from. And then finally, back in the primary fire function, we're just going to drag off of here. And if we do it off of the transform pin, we can just type spawn actor from class. That will automatically plug in the execution pin. The class that we want to give this is for now, uh, just as a kind of placeholder, we'll use the BP projectile player base. 
So this will be replaced a little bit later when we've created the child blueprints based off of this base class. But for now, we'll just use this as it will at least show us that something's happening. Uh, the collision handling we want to give this is always spawn and ignore collision. So that means that even if we're colliding a little bit of the ship or something else, it's not going to stop the projectile from be fu being fired. It will just instantiate it and then if needed, it will blow it straight up at the very least. If we quickly open the BP projectile base blueprint as well, there's a few things just to go back over here. So the first thing I wanted to make note of is that we have our projectile color. And remember I said that as soon as we begin play on the projectile which is being spawned, we're going to set a color value into the dynamic material that we'll be making a little bit later. And what this relates to is when we spawn this, because we have made our projectile color exposed on spawn over here, this is something I highlighted previously, I just wanted to come back and recap on this. What this does is now when we use this class as the projectile spawn or the actor to spawn, it reveals this value down here, which is exactly what we want to edit. So if we just right click on this, what we can do is we can promote this to a local variable. And this is one of the nice things of putting this as a function is that rather than having a color variable just exposed everywhere, which is only getting used in one place, we can keep this hidden away specifically into the function that it relates to. And we'll just call this the projectile color. Okay, so we've got our projectile color node. We'll just drag this down, hit compile so that we can come over here and we can now see the default value has been revealed. And we can go in here and just give this a color. I'm just going to give it a really light blue for now. We can change this whenever. Now, I just want to mention that this isn't going to work still because we haven't got the custom material made for the projectile. So it was going to try and do this, but it won't actually be able to change the color because we just haven't exposed any values called color for a material to have edited. But again, we'll get back to that later. I just wanted to make sure it makes sense why and how this is going to be working. And then just in case we wanted to, we can drag off of here and get a reference to self. So in case the projectile ever needs to know who or what instantiated it, uh, we now have a reference to our player being the, the parent object, the spawner of the projectile that will be created. So that is everything pretty much ready to go. We should now have projectiles spawning. One thing I think that we do need to change is I don't remember doing any updates on the collision of the projectile. So if we go back in here, yeah, this is set to block all. So this at the moment, because we've got it to ignore the colliding position, we are going to get stuck when we fire because it's spawning the projectiles directly under us and telling us to just be blocked. So if we change this to be custom, we can make the projectile class. We'll just use something which is already available in the engine. We'll call this a vehicle because I know that the object type of vehicle isn't going to be used for anything else. Um, and we can set that all of the vehicles completely ignore the pawn because we won't need them to ever hit the pawn because these are going to be spawned from the player. And we can also set them to ignore other vehicles, which means that any other type of projectile will set those to be uh, vehicles as well. And it means that the projectiles will be able to go through each other. So if we compile that now and hit play again, we should now see that we are firing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> just notice as well that if I stop playing, I've forgotten one thing. So if we go back to the player, go back to the event graph and find here. So we've got everything set up for when you press the button. We haven't got anything set for releasing the button. So we want to come off of the released and search for clear timer. So we'll do the clear timer by function name. And obviously the one that we're looking for, we can just come in here, control C and control V that in there. And what this will do is when you stop pressing, this will stop the timer from going around and looping again. So if we hit compile, press play again, can now see that the projectiles don't continue spawning forever. So we now have our primary projectiles in play. Okay, so the final thing back in the player blueprint, just came back in to tidy this a little bit. If we hit C when you've got everything selected, and I'll just call this the primary fire. So just so that we know again at a glance what this is doing. So we have our movement section, our player input, our player spawn animation, and now we have our primary fire functionality. So the next thing we'll do is probably look at adding the secondary fire as well and end this off in the next video for the player firing by adding the dynamic material because at the moment uh, what we're getting is the cube has this default white color on it, the SM pixel cube. And as I said, that doesn't have any dynamic components to it. It doesn't have a parameter that we can edit. So what we're seeing is that when we spawn this, we're just getting the standard gray color cube, which is fine for now. As I said, the main thing we just wanted to see this working. So we can leave that 
as it is and we'll start adding the dynamic materials hopefully in the next video okay so i'll leave this video here as always if you've enjoyed the video i find it useful then please do like and share the video do subscribe to be kept up to date with the latest content coming out on the channel as always i just wanted to say a big thank you to the current patrons for the channel and if you'd considered supporting the channel yourself then do press the little button bottom left hand side over here to go to the patreon page as ever though thanks for watching and i will see you all next time